Welcome to Whispering Loudly, the award-winning workshop whisperer podcast as featured by Apple with Rachel Evans, the number one automotive business coach in the aftermarket. Thanks to titanium sponsor, Mechanic Desk and gold sponsor, Podium. Whispering Loudly is the workshop whisperer podcast. Hello, I'm producer Mel and we're super excited to be joined by Dr. Imogen Reed. She is a lead policy and strategy at the Victorian Automotive Chamber of Commerce, a role that provides strategic policy oversight across VACC's 15 industry divisions. It's a big role. She is also manager of Women in Automotive, a special interest group of the VACC, which aims to support, promote and encourage more women into the automotive industry. Imogen has a PhD in international business and is a passionate advocate for lifting female participation rates and raising women's economic empowerment. Wow, that's such an impressive bio. And thank you so much for joining the podcast today, Imogen. Well, thank you, Mel, and that's very kind. <laughs> Hi, Imogen. So great to have you on Whispering Loudly. Can uh, I ask you to just add to that uh, amazing introduction and tell us a little bit more about your background and the role you play at the VACC and Women in Automotive. Thanks so much, Rachel. Yeah, well, my background is a bit interesting in the the fact that I did start out in academia and I quickly learned that that really wasn't for me and I decided to pursue industry. And what I didn't realise that there was this huge world of public policy out there and I moved to Scotland uh, once I finished my studies and got a job working for the Scottish Chamber of Commerce and Industry as a policy advisor and doing work with the European Commission. And then I moved back to Australia and joined the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and again in the international space, worked as a senior advisor for trade and international affairs. And it was really there that I discovered my passion for women's economic empowerment because I got the opportunity to work and lead a program with the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade on improving digital and trade literacy for women across the Indian Ocean Rim. So that really sort of excited me and found a way that was making a difference, also within a public policy kind of setting. So after that, I moved down to Melbourne, back to Melbourne, my home home city, and got a job with the VACC, which is um, Australia's largest, longest running Automotive Chamber of Commerce, um, 102 years, I think, at last count. Um, it's been around wow. for. Mm. So it's a very impressive organisation. We're based out of Melbourne, obviously. And I lead their policy team of about six professionals that we cover all aspects of the automotive aftermarket. So we don't look after the OEM manufacturer side, but anything that comes after that, so car retailing, the commercial vehicle side, towers, towing operators, you name it. And of course, workshop owners and, and repairers, uh, smash repairers, brake painters, etc. So it's a huge remit. We do a lot of work that probably a lot of people don't see from a policy perspective, um, but it's, it's certainly very important. Amazing. Phenomenal to have done that on the other side of the world and then to have come home and been able to step into a space where you really feel like it's a massive contribution. You know, I've had a number of friends and colleagues that have had jobs that just lit them up overseas but have come home and struggled to find something on an equal footing. So, yeah, I think that's amazing. And for you to land in our space and especially being an advocate of women in automotive, that's uh, that's very exciting for me. Want to find out how the Workshop Whisperer team can put your auto repair shop on the path to business success? Head to www.workshopwhisperer.com slash whispering loudly to claim your free workshop success session with the team. So for those who may not be familiar with the work that the VACC and Women in Automotive do in particular. Can you give us a rundown on what it provides for the industry? Sure. So VACC is that we cover a lot of, you know, so the policy side is that sits in in one department. We also do a lot of um, support around uh, apprentices. We have a commercial arm that assists businesses, you know, website development and other um, commercial activities. We have industrial relations support, of course, OHSE, et cetera. In terms of Women in Automotive, we aim to support attract and raise the profile of women working already in the industry but also we want to work with businesses in how they can attract recruit and retain women uh, in their businesses so it's sort of a two-pronged approach it's been around for about 20 years having said that it's probably in the last five years that it's really sort of 
move to an, move to the next level in terms of our visibility and and what we've really been able to offer our members. So it's fully funded by the VACC at this stage, with a view of of becoming more self sustaining. But you, we really have to thank VACC for investing in this incredible initiative. What's the take up or the uh, engagement from women in the industry been like with women in automotive? Well, we've gone on a really steep upward um, upward trend in terms of our membership rate. And it's like anything, it's about gaining that momentum and trying to get the word out that we exist. So people that discover us are like, oh my gosh, thank you. I didn't know you were here and this is so amazing. And and in terms of our membership numbers, we've had, we've started out when I first took it over, I think it was about 400. Now we're up close to around 1,500. And that includes men as well. So we, we're trying to be inclusive and it's really heartening to discover the amount of men actually coming to us saying this is amazing and how can we get on board and help us mm. so how can how can we change things it's been really positive and is it just for victorian men and women or is it australia wide no it is it's, it's for the entire world <laughs> i could say uh where we we take members from wherever you are we do have some international members but we are we like to consider ourselves national, although, of course, there is a heavy focus in Victoria just by virtue of where it's run out of. And I don't have a huge staff um, that, that helps with, with um, women in automotive, and we like to call it WinA or Winner. Uh, but we're, we're looking to be able to host more interstate um, events as, as we sort of move into that post-COVID time. And what could women and indeed men expect from membership? What's the, the type of support? So it puts you in, in touch with things that we're doing first up so you get connected to all our communications but we in the past have offered access to scholarships so we've had a focus on trying to lift the pipeline pipeline rates for women moving into those senior executive roles because we identified that this was a real space that needed to be improved I mean the, the stats across the across the board aren't great but at that top end and at the at the apprenticeship end as well we've, we've, we've seen that The numbers haven't moved and they're still really low and there's high attrition rates. So we recognise that there are problems there and so we're doing a bit more work at both ends of that spectrum. So there's those kinds of access to support events. So we were able to, we were offering so many wonderful events (laughs) pre-COVID and they all fell off a cliff, obviously, and and we moved to more of an online platform and just really promoting our digital presence during that time. But being able to engage with other women... uh, is sort of fundamental to what we what we do so that's that's key and core and that's what our feedback from we when we run member surveys is always we just love the face-to-face so it's being able to connect to the broader community and that's really something that i i love as well yes and even amongst our own client base of workshops everyone's just dying to uh, to catch up and be in the same room as each other so very very much know what that's all about join our free facebook group your profitable auto repair shop and join in on the conversation with auto repair shop owners just like you globally if we can change gears for just a moment and talk about something that's impacting every workshop in australia at the moment and that's the skills shortage of uh, trade qualified quality technicians has that impacted the work that's being done at women in automotive at all i wouldn't say it's impacted so far as that covid has impacted the work that we've done Mm. Um, and by virtue of that obviously covid has compounded an already terrible situation for our industry so not just the workshops but across the board and and also from a vsc perspective and, and from my background understanding the trends in terms of skill shortages has always been on our radar and trying to address that is, 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 is quite a serious task. But it's, so in terms of how that connects to women in automotive, I would say it's opened people's eyes to now you have to consider more of the talent pool. And I think that was reflected when we were at the um, aftermarket expo just recently and we had a number of workshops coming up to us saying, okay, I'd love to employ more women or I just can't get the staff or they don't stay or they, they go because someone else will pay them more money. So, yes, that, that was a real eye-opener. And we also work to address the pipeline of female automotive apprentices through our program Accelerating Women into Automotive, which is in partnership with the Victorian State Government. And that offers really a taster to interested women and girls, um, so it can be at any age, um, to experience what the automotive industry is like before they commit to a fully-fledged automotive um, apprenticeship. 
And so I can just say already, it's I think we're through a third round of, of, of girls, women and girls, and it's been incredibly successful. So those that have done the program, the four-week program, have uh, the majority have actually taken up an apprenticeship. So the idea is to actually keep them there once they start, because obviously the statistics show that there's a, a 75% drop-off once a once a female commences a an automotive trade which you know is not a good look that's that's a pretty frightening statistic so it just goes to show how important the work is to be able to help women and girls stick so to speak and find uh, a part of the trade that they love and uh, be able to carry it through as a career yeah, yeah. and that, that, that's a really good point about the stickiness so it's about providing support ongoing support as well once they start that apprenticeship so that you know, some of the, the issues that we've identified that can, can lead to the, the attrition um, can be addressed before they become too much of a problem. Yeah, wonderful. Just as a final question, Imogen, for our female listeners out there, what would be the number one piece of advice you'd give to them when it comes to uh, getting themselves into the industry or once they're there, staying? I would say resilience and also to not forget about automotive as a career path because I definitely didn't have an automotive background when I joined the ACC and I probably raised a few eyebrows <laughs> being this, you know, sort of left of field um, pick to go into this position. But what I feel the automotive industry can take away from, or from, from this discussion is that take a chance on people that don't have necessarily an automotive background. So if you work in HR, if you're in accounting, if you're an interior designer, if you're a graphic designer, you can all work in automotive. It's a, it's a really broad industry um so this is from perhaps more of a a corporate perspective Um, but for girls considering an automotive apprenticeship resilience and just keep going because you will find that workshop that will be wonderful and i know that we've all had experiences in our lives and our careers where we may have had a workplace that wasn't um, exactly perfect but we do we do move on and, and we do find those places that that work for us so in terms of my piece of advice is Take a chance, stick with it, because it is an amazing industry. It really is. I mean, I've been in this role for five years now, almost five and a half years. And gosh, I, I do learn something new every day, I can assure you. It's such important advice. And, you know, in the part of the aftermarket that we specialise in, you know, repairers, there are so many women who actually gave up a career to come and support their other halves. And many of them want to make a real go of whatever their role is in the business. But after a while, they get deflated because there's the pressures of being a mum as well or, you know, being the one that is coming in trying to help during school hours but then still trying to do all of the uh, the other gender-specific roles that, that might fall into that. I myself uh, never in a million years thought I'd end up in the automotive industry but 12 years down the track, here we are. So I think it's such a great thing that there's uh, not just awareness but there's actually actionable things happen you know taking place where women are supported to get into the industry to stay in the industry and to make a real go of it so thank you so much for the work that you're doing to support females uh, in the automotive aftermarket thank you so much for coming and sharing your story and your insights with our whispering loudly listeners today thanks for listening to whispering loudly the award-winning workshop whisperer podcast as featured by apple with rachel evans the number one automotive business coach in the aftermarket thanks to titanium sponsor mechanic desk and gold sponsor podium